Mom is painting the poop shack. <laughs> She's tired of being a little Miss Muppet. I figure this way we can see the spiders in here. <laughs> we have those big wolf spiders. We do. A spider is a spider, but a wolf spider, some of the, including their legs, can be like a three inch diameter and they are just downright creepy. So, Mama's got the solution and she's <laughs> painting the walls light color. So little by little, she's making it homey. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's been a long time since I sat in this chair by the brick hearth and the cast iron pans and had a chat with you all. <laughs> I used to sit here and film all the time, but that's when I lived only a few miles away from this cabin and now it's an all day drive to get here. But we've been coming here quite often, I just don't always film much when we're here because we've been coming here and relaxing and there's really not too much to film at that time. So uh, on this journey we've been here for a few days now and aside from just puttering around in the cabin we really haven't done much. Mom is still tidying up the cabin and uh, making it nice and homey. Looks good. They go so good with the brickwork. They do. They really do. It's been good to be back and using this cabin. I know a lot of you um, love this place as much as we do. And a lot of you started following us when I was building this cabin. A lot of you watched this project unfold. I took my time with it. It was certainly a labor of love. I had an idea in my mind what I wanted here in this meadow and single-handedly I made that idea materialize. Lori owned a hair salon at the time and was busy with that while I kept myself busy with this. Building this was hard work if you want to look at it that way, but from my perspective, when you're doing something you love, even though it may be strenuous like building a cabin or climbing a mountain, it's enjoyable. Work is a four-letter word that describes what you're doing when you'd rather be doing something else. <laughs> when you tuck it out from fulfilling a dream, it's a good kind of tired. And that's a lot different from the frazzle-dazzle mindset we're all taught to adhere to. Now Frankie was always here on the job with me, but he had his own ideas how he'd spend the day. He wasn't much help Give with the carpentry, break. oh, but he'd make Come up on, for it in other ways. On, you see what I mean? <laughs> Good boy. Well, fellas, there she be. The siding is on. Got the little firewood cubby all done. Upper gable. That was a little bit of a chore doing that. No comfortable place to perch myself. I had multiple angles to work with and only one square edge to work off of. But come out pretty good. Got a good reveal along the roof there for the water to drain down through. Pretty happy with that. All the cuts came out pretty decent. I really like the little branch stubs and stuff like that. Building the cabin was a lot of fun and we enjoyed having it. But if you're new to this channel, well, you don't know the whole story. We wanted to put the cabin in the meadow. The problem was the meadow was a half mile off the road with no trail leading to it, so I had to make one. 
I cut in a half mile of road and then cut a few hundred stumps flush to the ground. Frankie was there to supervise and volunteered his two cents on the idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Contrary to the naysayers' opinions, pulling the stumps wasn't a good option here, as doing so would have left me with a few hundred holes to fill and just as many ugly stumps left for me to look at. No thank you. I had enough mud holes to deal with as it was, and passing through them with an ATV made them worse, and worse, and worse, and worse. It got to the point where driving in didn't necessarily mean I was driving out, so I had to pull a lifeboat behind me, and I'm not kidding. Well, maybe I'm kidding just a little bit and not telling you the whole story about the boat. In ideal conditions, I'd have gravel delivered. Then I'd spread it with heavy equipment and repeat this costly process while working my way towards the home site. Unfortunately, <laughs> these weren't ideal conditions. My project was in the same condition as my wallet, so I had to improvise and use what I had on hand out there in the woods. I had punky logs that were no good for firewood, so I used those. I laid them into the mud holes perpendicular to my direction of travel. This method is called a corduroy road, and it's been used for centuries. I had a supervisor on the job who was always eager to lend a hand, you know, to supervise. I had an ATV to move logs where I needed them, and a sandbank where I dug sand with a steam shovel that often ran out of steam and needed replenishing with a cold one. Good boy. I wouldn't be exaggerating to tell you that I laid a lot of logs and spread a lot of sand along the way, but not without routine inspections, of course. All in all, the project went well. It was labor-intensive, sure it was. But except for the cost of a couple of culverts, this half mile of road didn't cost me diddly squat, and I've been driving vehicles on it ever since. This straightaway, I, I, it just really has come into it. It looks great. Um, if you remember, when I was laying this in with all the old logs and stuff, you know, like dead tamarack and stuff that I was finding on the side that's no good for firewood, I would lay it across. And then I would shovel sand out of my sandbank and come out here and cover the logs with it. And there were so many naysayers when they were watching me do this. But here it is, probably a decade later. And look at it. I drive in here. Now that area up there, where the sun is hitting, it's a 90 degree corner. That was the deepest, soupiest spot on this journey. It's not that way any longer. It's a nice walk. Half a mile to the road. You'd never know unless you step down, like boom, see the logs that I have laid in here. See that? Up here. How solid it is. This is all logs in here. Okay? And how many people said it was going to be a waste of time? Look at this here, and then I'll turn around. Way back there. Nice. It's really incredible how well that corduroy system works. 
So it's been fun reflecting back on that project and seeing Frankie in his prime. My dear boy, uh, we miss him immensely. And I was 10 years younger there. And it just goes to show you how quickly time passes and how quickly things can change. But what hasn't changed is the condition of that road, which is simply amazing for how it was built and what I had to work with. You know, once I had the mud holes filled with logs and then I spread sand over the top and I could start driving in with a vehicle, I started coming in with my backhoe, which was a lot heavier than a normal vehicle, inching my way in and putting gravel and stone where it was needed, like around the culverts and stuff. But since then, in a decade's time, there's been no maintenance done whatsoever, and the road is still solid. It's getting to the point now where there's a few areas that have settled, and I need to put some more fill over the top. But those logs, none of those logs will ever be dug up or replaced. It's not required. You just add a little bit of dirt over the top where needed. But any road, no matter how it is built, will require some maintenance over time. As this one, it's getting to the point to add a little over the top. So I've given you an update on the road, and very soon I will give you an update on the cabin. I will show you more of the interior and share the plans that we have for adding on to the cabin and our plans for moving back there and making it our home base. All right, so more cabin time coming up soon, folks. All the best to you, and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss